Well, good afternoon, everyone, and I hope everyone had a good weekend and enjoyed the glorious sunshine. It is good to be back with you, and, and this Monday is with our Minister for Enterprise, Lawrence Skelly. Now, despite rumours to the contrary, the Health and um, Social Care Minister has not run off to host his own chat show. He will be back with us later in the week. So it falls for me to share today's numbers with you. The token is 5,564. We have had 5,561 tests returned, which means there are three people waiting for results. There are no new cases today, meaning that we are now on day 26 of no new cases. Now, we've talked for some time about the 15th of June being a significant day in terms of the measures in place. Well, here we are. It is a day of real change for our island community. From today, social distancing will no longer be required in most areas of our lives. With the exception of health and care environments, we will be able to meet and greet our friends and family. In a number of ways, I hope that the end of social distancing will bring our community closer together. So many of you have written to me or commented on social media that the one thing that you have been missing more than anything else was a hug from a friend, a parent or a grandchild. I am sorry that we had to come between you Again, I was not comfortable doing this. It was a regrettable but necessary step. First it was no one, then it was two. I'm delighted to tell you that the Council of Ministers this morning agreed that with immediate effect, we are removing the legal restrictions on the numbers of people that you can welcome into your home. We have stepped out of your home completely now. We agreed this morning that we would end the legal restrictions on gatherings outside. This is again with immediate effect. Now, while our situation regarding COVID remains so strong, we see no reason to prevent people coming together. Now, this is, of course, a logical consequence of the end of social distancing. But it is also an important step towards our new Manx normal. I know that some people will not yet feel comfortable getting too close to others, and I understand that, and I respect that. We are not forcing anyone to do anything with which they are not comfortable. So today is an important day for our society, it is starting to look pretty normal, isn't it? From today, you can go for a meal indoors. You can go back to the gym. You can have friends around for dinner. From today, teachers are back in all our schools getting ready for our children. Children who have been in hubs will return to their normal schools this Wednesday. We have sought views from our heads. Children who wish to, to do so will be able to return to school from the 22nd of June. That's next Monday. It is also an important day for our economy. I do have some more announcements from this morning's Council of Ministers meeting, but before I share them with you, I would like to invite the Minister for Enterprise to update us on feedback he is receiving from local businesses. Lawrence. Good morning, uh, Chief Minister. And Brainer Sarah, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. It's uh, my delight and my honour to be here today to give you an update uh, from industry. Today is a massive milestone in the Isle of Man. Removing the legal requirement with regards to social distancing for businesses has been welcomed. Not wholeheartedly because people are still concerned, but in the main, they are very, very happy. In offices, I see people now returning. Myself and a number of my colleagues have actually been in our office today, and it's nice to have that interaction. 
and that dynamic uh, with, with people once more. In fact, Timwall tomorrow will, seat, will sit physically back in the Timwall building, and that is also very welcome. But in terms of other businesses and other industries, we know that people have continued to work right the way through this pandemic. Our finance and professional services, our digital services, they have still been producing for us valued income for our economy. The domestic economy is the difficult area. And that is the area where we, as an island, need to support as much as we possibly can. So when you talk about the domestic economy from today, you can sit inside a restaurant. That's going to be fantastic news. While the weather is great, that's wonderful, but we know what the Isle of Man is like. It is very, very changeable weather. So having that opportunity, that is fantastic news for our hospitality industry. With regards to retail, I paid a visit down to Ramsey on Friday and I met with a number of different retailers. Today, I've been down Strand Street and I've really been heartened by stories of real innovation, Manx spirit innovation, resilience, and they do want to come through this very strongly. And they've managed to adapt where necessary. As a department, we have an adaptation grant. We have a number of different schemes that have supported business through this area. We have been trying to understand the impact and what we're going to do is in July with the Department of Treasury, we'll be coming forward with our recovery plan. How do we stimulate the economy going forward? But what I want to say to you, the great Manx public, whilst you adapt to this new Manx normal and you live in this new environment, we want you to get out and spend in the local economy. It's been said before that there really is power in the multiplier effect, and that I'd like you to do so. But also, when you're thinking about our domestic economy, our retailers and our hospitality, do not forget the personal touch, the human touch. And that is what now we have been able to do by relaxing the social distancing. And it's wonderful to be able to go out and hug. So with that, I'll pass back to Chief Minister. OK, well, thank you very much, Lawrence, and thank you for all the work your department has been doing to support companies and workers during these really tough times. There is a long way to go, but supporting local businesses whenever we can has never been more important. I said I had some more announcements for you, and when I spoke to you last Thursday, I said that I hope to update you this week on the question of the rest of leisure and hospitality. So, pubs, clubs, theatres and cinemas... So let's do that. We had previously suggested that pubs could open today if they offered a food-driven service. We had also said that we hoped that pubs would be able to open before the end of June. The Council of Ministers considered this at our meeting this morning. We have decided that in light of our current situation, we saw no reason to prevent pubs from opening sooner than that. We have therefore agreed that pubs, bars and clubs can open normally as soon as they are ready to do so from the 18th of June, this Thursday. Until then, the services do have to be food-led. We have also agreed today that cinemas and theatres could open when they are ready to do so after the same date, this Thursday. This morning, we also discussed the remaining areas of leisure, this included the more intense aerobic activities in gyms and the swimming pools. And we today agreed that these can both resume as soon as the venues are ready from the 18th of June, this Thursday. Now I know that for non-COVID safety reasons, the swimming pools are likely to take a little time, maybe two weeks, to be able to open. But when they are ready, they can open. One thing that will last just a little bit beyond Thursday is the speed limit that we put in place. As we have previously announced, this has in any case increased 60 miles per hour from today. Our plan is that it will revert fully to its pre-COVID state on the 22nd of June. I am delighted that we have been able to get this in place. By the time these last changes take place, we will almost have taken the final steps out of your lives. You have truly earned it. Now, I don't want to rain on this positive parade, 
but this is probably the right moment for me to talk about what happens if we do start seeing cases again on our island. As I've mentioned before, we are well equipped to respond to any cases popping up, and we are of course doing everything we can to prevent that happening. Although we only have a small number of people arriving at our borders, everyone presents a risk to us. The small numbers of people who are coming onto the island, returning residents, and those critical to keeping the island running, still have to quarantine. But if we do see a new case or two, we will be ready to contact trace and break that chain again. We will maintain our testing capacity until it is no longer needed. We will stay vigilant and ready to respond. Everyone has a role to play to maintain this state of readiness. If any of you develop symptoms, please, whatever you do, don't assume that it can't be COVID-19. Do the responsible thing. Stay at home and call 111. Businesses also have a role to play. Although we have removed the legal requirement for social distancing, we will need businesses to consider the implications should we see a return of COVID-19. We may need to bring back some measures at some stage, and we may need to do so quickly with little notice. This will be a last resort. But I would like every business to carefully consider if they are ready to act should the need arise. To help us all with this, we have developed a new document, Many of you will remember the stay safe document. This is how we described we would go from lockdown to the more normal situation we find ourselves in today. The new document will be something like a reverse roadmap. It will describe what might trigger return to some of our measures. And I will be talking a bit more about this in Timwald tomorrow. We will then finish discussions with industry, our clinicians and our public health officers. We hope to publish the document by this time next week. I want as many people as possible to be familiar with it so that together we understand what we may have to do and so that we are prepared to act quickly should the need arise. I'm sorry to maybe put a dampener on what should be a thoroughly optimistic day for our island, but I don't want us to forget that there is still a global pandemic going on out there we have earned the right to be optimistic and to resume our normal lives, but we must not be complacent and we must all continue to act responsibly. So the question now is, what's left? I promised you that we would step out of your lives as soon as it was safe to do so, and we have done just that. As our society comes back together and our economy picks up, I think there are two elements remaining for us to consider, borders and emergency powers. On borders, for the moment at least, that is simple. We are not ready to make significant changes. We still need to see a sustained improvement outside of our island and especially in the United Kingdom. There are signs of things going in the right direction, but they are not yet at a place where we can risk people coming back and forth and potentially importing the virus. On emergency powers, with the removal of the next batch of measures today and over the next week, there will be precious few powers still remaining that come from the emergency proclamation. And I will be making a statement tomorrow in Timwald about the next steps. For now, the Enterprise Minister and I will take questions. And first we have is Simon Richardson from Business 365. Over to you, Simon. Good afternoon, Chief Minister, and some very positive news there. All the indications, therefore, are that we are emerging from the pandemic possibly earlier than expected. Does this mean that the overall cost of the crisis to government may be much less than anticipated? Well, obviously, we, we hope it will be. We've got ourselves in this fantastic situation because we've worked together as a team, the people of the Isle of Man, the government, the private sector, the public sector, uh, third sector, everyone has really pulled together to get us into a position, as I've said many a time, if you'd have said six weeks ago, 
that we would find ourselves in this position. You'd, you'd have been publicly laughed at, but we are in a really good position. Hopefully this will help us get, it's not just about the Isle of Man economy, it's about individuals being able to get back to work, to, to earn money, to support their families, to to hopefully eventually go on holiday and, and to buy those little extra treats. I don't know, Lawrence, if you want to add anything to that. Yeah, no, thank you, uh, Simon. Uh, good question. Uh, that is exactly the work that is ongoing at the moment with our colleagues with Treasury. We have had some external analysis to understand what that impact ha has been. And uh, one of those uh, an analysis points was uh, surveying over 4,000 households on this island, as well as 750 businesses to try and understand what that actual impact is. So um, we won't know the exact figure, but uh, clearly uh, coming out of it quicker and sooner is, is going to be less financially uh, impacted on the island. So that puts us in a hopefully a better position to uh, launch what we would regard as a recovery and stimulus plan going forward. Though it is fair to, to, to point out to you, Simon, that we had been on track to have a fully balanced economy with a surplus by the end of this administration <laughs> to absorb the public sector pension black hole, which, was, which is, is, is there. And, and sadly, that will now not happen. And we will have to look at um, coming up with measures to get our economy as um, balanced as soon as possible. But I, I can see this taking a, a, another two or three years to, to get in this position. But we have certainly laid the foundations for business to get um, back as soon as possible and the sooner we can get our economy firing on all cylinders then the sooner we can have a balanced economy but we are expecting um, tax and VAT receipts to be down um, in this coming year. Your next question Simon. Thank you. My, my second, yeah, my second question, it, it goes back to schools if I may. Um, there still seems to be a little confusion. Could you clarify that all schools are opening again on the 22nd of June and that social distancing is no longer being practiced in the schools. That's right. No um, distancing will be practiced in the schools because there's no need for it because no one has to do that on the Isle of Man. Obviously, bar our hospital and our nursing homes, care homes, where there are still some restrictions in place to protect the really most vulnerable members of our society. So no social distancing in our schools. However, there will be things like hand wipes, etc., for um, for pupils to because we're still asking people to you know, wash your hands. If, if you if you can um, keep keep your distance from people, so um, that will continue. All the schools hope to be taking all of our young people from the 22nd. Now, obviously, the health minister is, is doing his best. He's spoken to the heads, and he will be continuing to speak to the head teachers of all the schools. They are opening up, as I say today, to get or they're in the schools today to get them ready. We'll be doing it in a staged manner. We can't just suddenly open up overnight when we've had this forced shutdown. But yes, from the 22nd of June, we, we hope to be able to offer um, a place for all children whose parents want them to go back. I, I, I said we would not force people to go back to the start of the new school year in September, but if anyone wants their children to go back, and I would hope as many as possible because we are in, in, in a good position, then we are hopeful that it will be from the 22nd. Thank you, Simon. Right, now we move on to Tim Glover from Manx Radio. Fast am I, Tim. Fast am I, Chief Minister and uh, Enterprise Minister, and uh, we must be some of the luckiest people on the planet at the moment with the way things have gone. Just want to ask uh, about schools still, because um, it's the one question we're getting all the time here now. Um, the unions, uh, are they on side are they working with the department because we've received obviously a couple of statements in the last uh, few days uh, from unions not happy with the ceo of the education department and uh, comments he made in giving evidence to a, a timwald inquiry and they're wanting the public record to be corrected are the unions maybe going to stop the 22nd of uh, november uh, for june return or, or are you confident that you're going to be able to press ahead now Right, well, I, I wasn't aware of, of such angst with, with our unions, but I, I thought the unions were working well with, with, our, with Minister um, Dr. Allenson in, in, in this situation. As I say, he has spoken to the, the head teachers, and we hope to be back on track for the, for the 22nd. So, the, you, you know, the, if, if there, are, there is some comments that have maybe been um, taken out of context or accidentally said when they weren't meant, then I'm more than happy to look into that. Obviously, we, we value working with 
with our unions. I'm an ex-union leader myself, so um, it's important that we have everyone working together as, as Team Isle of Man. But we've done well working together, and I think it's really important that the sooner we get our young people back to school, get their education going, they've got exams and, and, and changes for the new school year, that the sooner we get it all up and running, the better for everyone. And I, I really um, hope, and I, I'm, I'm confident that our, our unions will work with us to, um, to enable us to get to that situation. But it's not just the, the, the teachers, it's also everyone that works at the school. You, you, you know, there's an awful lot of people that work hard behind the scenes, um, whether it be cleaners, janitors, dinner, dinner people. You know, on, on the school meals, it's not just our teachers. The, there is a group of hardworking people that look after our young people when they're at school. Can I just follow up on the schools issue? Uh, is it still the plan to have the same school holidays, the same term lengths and a, a restart in September, or are you looking to maybe nibble into the summer holidays somewhat? Well, I, I know the, the Minister is looking at um, maybe variants of, of how, you know, we, we, we do things going forward to try and help um, with our young people's education. That's something I cannot comment on at the moment, Tim. It's in um, negotiations. We have to agree this with, with, with our teachers. It's not something that we can just do the changes without their Im input and obviously their support. We want this to work. Whatever uh, we, we have going forward has to have the buy-in of everyone. So, yes, we will obviously do see what we can do to um, get a, a extra f f for our young people. But let's see, and uh, I'm sure the Minister for Education, Sport and Culture, Dr Allenson, will make the announcement once he has um, everyone's support in, in any changes he may be looking for. Thank you very much, Tim. OK, we now move on to Chris Kaye from Energy FM. Chris, faster my. Good afternoon, Chief Minister. Uh, thank you, first of all, for the comprehensive update this afternoon. You answered a lot of questions I had in your announcement, and you've also taken questions on schools, so I won't run over covered ground. Um, now that the social distancing rules have been abolished, are there any plans in place to allow Tinwald Day celebrations and, and other public events? Well, obviously, with Timbal Day, we're reliant on some international guests coming over, the um, imported bands that come over and do the military tattoo and, and line the parade, which I know everyone really looks forward to. That will not be able to, to take place. So, obviously, I have advised the President and, and, and the Speaker of the House of Keys, President of Timbal, that we um, were bringing the, the changes forward to enable them to maybe make some changes. So, um, as, as a Manxman, there's nothing prouder for me personally than to represent your island on, on Timbald Hill. And I personally would like to see uh, um, people there so, so supporting. You know, where we promulgate the acts, the law cannot go ahead of, if new laws aren't promulgated on Timbald Hill. So, it's not just. Um, a historic event that has no meaning. It's something that's really important, and I, I think is, is, it's it's a part of our it's our national day. It's a great celebration. But as chief minister, I don't control Timul Day. That really is for the clerk of Timul and the president of Timul and and the speaker to work on. But anything they would they would need with with help, I, I would certainly give to see that. Um, increase what we had expected to, to be able to happen. But as I say, the um, off-island guests, etc., wouldn't be able to come in. And your next question, Chris. Yeah, I'm sure you'd agree that seeing live sports again uh, around the world is so encouraging. There was rugby taking place in New Zealand over the weekend in front of crowds. What are the rules around organised team sports on the island, such as football, rugby, hockey and cricket returning? Yeah, they'll all, they can all come back. The, the, the rules and enable all that to happen. Obviously, we, we, we will ask them to follow the guidelines of, the, of their sporting associations, obviously washing hands, etc., cleansing the, the ball, if it's football or cricket ball, etc. But basically, everything is back to normal now from, from a sporting point of view. But check. And I have been, I have been asked to, uh, to find out specifically about dance schools as well. Are they all OK to reopen? Yeah, you know, with with the social distancing going down to, to zero, that now enables us to allow all these sort of events to, to, to start over again. If, if you look at the social distancing, with, with two metres, we were looking at 25% of our young people being able to go back to school. When you go down to one metre, it was 50% of our young people. When you go down to, you know, nothing, 
obviously they can all go back. And when you're, this is day 26 of, of no cases, our calls to the COVID-111 hotline are, are down to an absolute minimum when you compare that to the 800 plus that we had in the, in the early onset. And we've got no active cases, no one in the hospital. So the hospital is now working up to come on stream with its no, as, as normal as it can with doing all the sorts of procedures that it had to, to stop. So yeah, dance classes, off you go. I look forward to seeing you, Chris, in a, in a, in a tutu doing a dance. Right, thank you very much, Chris. And, and, and last but not least, we've got Alex Bell from the BBC. Alex, that's to my. That's to my. Chief Minister, people will be watching the Isle of Man from all corners of the world right now, probably wishing they could come over here for a holiday. Are you able to give any indication as to when you think the borders will open again? Not really, Alex. I know I, um, my good friend, um, the Chief Minister of Guernsey, Gavin, um, and myself are having a, a chat about corridors. To we, We've said before, um, our good friends in Guernsey are in exactly the same position as the Isle of Man with no cases, and they do the 14 days quarantining. So that might be something. I know Lawrence's team are, are, are looking into that. With you know, I've said government couldn't do this, but if, an estate, if a travel agent, I think he said a state agent, then a travel agent wants to look into that, and that's something that can happen. Um, it really will be a case of seeing what happens, and it may well be that if Ireland gets ahead of everyone else, of our adjacent neighbours, then they might be the first back. You know, we've got to look at the the number of cases, the, the spread in the areas around us, and once it's down to a safe level that our medics, whether it be public health or our medic group, can advise us that it's safe to open, then we will. So I'm reluctant to give a date. I, I would love to be able to say that in two months' time, it's totally open, and, and who knows? But at this moment in time, the best protection we have on the Isle of Man to ensuring that we do not get a second wave is to keep our borders closed, with the exceptions of people going away for compassionate grounds or people coming in on compassionate grounds and key workers. There will be obviously some sort of relaxation for locals travelling in the future, but the borders will to um, people who aren't Manx residents have to remain closed for some time. And I, I have to say, that's probably the um, biggest topic that I get in my post bag. Everyone has, and I thank everyone for the cards and letters, messages, etc., and stopping me in the street saying, well done. But equally, the second part is please keep the borders closed. So it, it's something that concerns the public quite rightly. We need to ensure that we do our utmost to prevent a second wave, and that's what we in the Council of Ministers will be doing to help protect the people of the Isle of Man. Now, that's interesting there. I, I think I heard you say that people might be able to leave the Isle of Man to go away before people who don't live here can come over here for trips. Is that, is that going to be the case? Well, we're, we're, we're looking at a number of options. You know, we're, we're trying to get the people, the good people of the Isle of Man, to give them as much normality as possible. Now, if you um, go away off the island, you will still have to quarantine for 14 days. Um, and, and, and that's the secret. So people leaving the island to come back, if they've got a, a, a trip to see a loved one, say, they have a base that they can go and isolate for 14 days. Sadly, I can't see tourists coming over to the Isle of Man for quite some time because no one's going to want to come on holiday if they've got to stay in their hotel room or cottage for 14 days. But we are obviously looking at doing our best to give um, the, the, the people of the Isle of Man as good a Manx normal as, as possible, Alex. And uh, just as a second question, we, we are as good as liberated here on the Isle of Man from the end of this week. Almost everything will have returned to some semblance of normality. Are you confident that in the unfortunate event that we get a second wave, that the virus rears its head again, we will be able to bring measures in even quicker and more effectively? Yeah, absolutely, um, Alex. This has been a learning curve. None of us in government have, have fought this battle before against an invisible enemy that gave no mercy to, to our people, especially to our vulnerable people. So we've learned lessons. We've uh, the, the, the test, test, test and the trace, trace, trace that we've done, the contacting to break and the, the spread of it is, is something that we've, we've done really well and we will be able to roll it out really, really quickly. Um, so, yeah, there, there are things that once you've been through this the first time, there are always ways, right, you can say, well, next time, would we shut down everything or, or can we do things slightly differently? So, yes, we're, we're, you know, I've been at pains to point out that we're not complacent here on the Isle of Man. 
Yes, I saw a lovely um, Facebook posting where it was um, the three legs of man kicking the, the coronavirus, COVID-19, off the island. And I thought, yeah, so that was a lovely one. But we're not complacent that it, it could try and regroup and, and come back here. So we need to be prepared. And I, I think if it happens, we are ready. We're not complacent. And we will make sure we can do um, as much as possible to flatten that curve and, and kick it back off the island should, and it's only a should it get back onto the island without impacting into people's lives as much as we had to do th th this time round. But then by going in hard um, and quick like we have done, we are now the first place in the British Isles to do away with social distancing, and I think the second in Europe. So it, it has proven that, that it, it, it has worked. Um, Tim, I think you wanted to come back. I'll, I'll allow one more question from each of you if, if, if you would like. So actually, um, to be fair, Simon next and then Tim. Thank you, Chief Minister. Could I ask you that uh, now that the All Island speed limit has risen from 40 to 60 miles per hour. Can you tell us if there were any prosecutions for motorists who exceeded the 40 miles an hour limit? And also, if a driver was found to exceed 40, but be within the signpost speed for the area, could a prosecution stand in court? Thank you. Um... From what I know, Tim, there were a number of prosecutions for people speeding. I haven't got the exact number. That I don't think it was a large number, um, less than 10, but people were prosecuted for speeding on the Isle of Man. Um, the emergency powers legislation would trumps everything. So if the emergency powers say you cannot go over 40, then we, we were advised we didn't need to replace the 50 uh, miles per hour signs that are around the island because... Um, that's, you know, everyone had been told clearly not to go above 40. Now, obviously, we are um, going to go away from that ne ne next week. But on the advice from our, our chief constable and, and, and his team, it was felt that to do it, to lift it at once, could cause some accidents where people who have been um, restricted to 40 suddenly feel the urge to... Um, clear the valves or whatever on, 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 the, on, on the vehicles and therefore doing it in two stages was felt to be the safest way because at the end of the day it has to be safe, safety first and I'd promised the people of the Isle of Man that we would not be implementing any uh, legislation through emergency, the 1936 Emergency Act um, that would be used as, as, as long term. It was purely to fight this emergency and you know, hopefully the public can see we've been absolutely true to our word on, on that, Simon. Um, Tim, next, Thank you. from Manx Radio. Well, most of us, uh, Chief Minister and uh, uh, Minister Skelly, are celebrating, obviously, liberation within our borders, as it were. There are those that still want to maintain social distancing. There are those that are shielding. I know you're trying to stay out of lives, but is government looking at uh, making maybe the, the shops continue with their special hours for these people of maybe even a scheme of lanyards so that other people can identify and respect somebody who wants to maintain social distancing. Yeah, that's a very good point, Tim. And I know Lawrence has been working on this, so I'll, I'll ask Lawrence to um, comment. Yeah, no, th thank you for that, uh, Tim. Uh, it's a good question, really, because uh, there have been special hours for those who are vulnerable already. And I think this sort of highlights, I think, the responsibility that we have, not just as the shop owners, but also the public as well, that we should respect people's space uh, if, the, if they still feel uncomfortable. And uh, in, in discussions with, uh, with a number of uh, um, retailers in the hospitality industry, we'll see a, a, a phased approach, I would imagine, as confidence uh, grows. Uh, but uh, I was speaking to one uh, re retailer uh, just, just today who said, well, shopping habits may change. Uh, working habits are changing. And the question is, you know, whilst you can go back in the office environment right now because uh, there's no social distancing, uh, how many people will choose to do so? We know a number of businesses already have said you do not need to go back to the office at least until the end of the year. So that will have an impact in the footfall within around Douglas, it will benefit local economy uh, around the Isle of Man and it will actually benefit the uh, climate change agenda, but the shopping habits may change and therefore if you consider how they are in other countries, whereas do shops actually need to open at 9 o'clock? 
or maybe they should open at 10 o'clock and or 11 o'clock and stay open till 7 o'clock whereas you could have an experience where you could do a bit of shopping you could stay for something to eat and go out for a drink and uh, these are all questions that are uh, being asked uh, at the moment as we look to formulate a strategy for our uh, domestic economy so so it is one that is uh, under uh, active discussion at the moment so thank you for the question yeah thank you tim i think it's worth pointing out that Whilst this has been a terrible situation and, and we've lost, lost loved ones on the Isle of Man, there has been some good to come out of this. And the Great Manx community pulling together ha has, has been one, but also looking and trying new ideas. And I, I think there are a number of things that we've had to do that actually people have said, well, actually, I quite like that. And therefore, we working from home being the, the, the classic one. So I, I think we, as not just a government, but a, as, as a country, need to say, well, what did we like ab about this period? That we, we were forced to do things differently. So is there anything that you would like to keep? And I think instead of automatically going to back to the same old, let's look at... Um, Doing mixing things up, for, you know, for, from a good point of view, and that's obviously one that that we can take on board. Chris Cave from Energy. Chris, did you have another question? Yeah, how closely have you been monitoring the events uh, unfolding in the UK over the last few weekends? A number of mass demonstrations where, from the outside, it seems like social distancing guidelines haven't been adhered to. If it emerges that there hasn't been a spike in cases, despite people being in close contact. Does that indicate to you that the situation in the UK is vastly improving? Because what's happening there will have implications here, I take it. Well, obviously, we monitor on a regular basis. I know our Director of um, Public Health, Dr Ewart, regularly uh, is in conference calls with the Head of Public Health in, in the United Kingdom, well, England and, and Scotland, England and Wales. So um, we regularly view what's going on in the United Kingdom and, and get their feedback and experiences. And we're also looking across the whole of the world to see what, what's going on. So I, I've always been a great believer, and you're probably fed of me saying this, but I genuinely believe it's, it's Manx solutions for a Manx situation. But of course, if someone's got experience that you can learn from, then of course you're going to take that on board. So we're regularly following what goes on in the UK and if we can learn anything, fine. But I think the daily number of active cases will be the key indicator on, on how we handle things going forward. Thank you very much, Chris. And last but not least, Alex, do you have another question? Oh, no, Alex has gone. OK, well, thank you all very much for your questions today. Now, after a lot of baby steps, we are now picking up the pace as we boldly stride towards the future. I know that there has been a lot of change in a relatively short period, but it does feel like the right thing to do, getting our island up and running. But please, let's not assume that this virus has gone for good. The basics got us here, and the basics will be no less important for as long as the global pandemic continues. I said we would step out of your lives. I think we are almost there. Increasingly, it is up to you. Up to you to keep making the responsible decisions for you and your loved ones. Have a great week and please stay safe. Thank you all very much.